Hey guys, welcome. Jennifer here with Moreau Family Farm. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that little subscribe button. Hit the little notification bell so you know the next time that we post a video. And um, thanks for stopping by today. So today I kind of just want to show you something. I'm always talking about our grass. I know it sounds crazy, but when you have livestock and you know just farm animals, it is so, so incredibly important. Your grass is just such an important thing. One, it cuts down on your livestock grocery bill, right? And it's just so much healthier for the animals. You know exactly what they're getting. You know exactly what's going into your body. No fillers, just all natural, good stuff. So today I'm gonna show you guys what it is that I'm actually talking about when I say that we don't have good grass. And I'm gonna tell you why we're making a chicken tractor to help that correct that issue. So this isn't an area that the livestock usually comes into, but this is something that's in pretty much all the areas. This, from a distance, looks pretty. When our neighbors drive by, they're like, oh, your grass is growing. No, no, our grass is not growing. Now, maybe a little bit. We have a little bit of grass growing in this area. But for the most part, when you see even a little bit of green in our yard, it's this, moss. It's spongy, it's very like mystical, um, fairy-like. <laughs> when we first moved here, I thought it was cool. The kids loved it. We would take our shoes off and just kind of walk on it. It's soft and just fluffy and spongy feeling. Now, I think one of the reasons why we have such an issue is because of all these sweet gums the seeds anyways that are on the ground I think it causes the wrong kind of material to go back into the soil so instead of putting good like nitrogen in the soil I'm not sure what it does but it definitely does not create a good foundation for our ground now this area over here where the ducks are at this area seems to get grass. Now, our grass is not growing in yet because even like days like today where it's still probably about 40 degrees out, but it's not growing because it's too cold still. But you'll see that there are, is some, now to you, you might say that those are weeds, but to us, dandelions are good. We make dandelion jelly and our livestock likes the dandelions. So this whole area here gets filled with grass and dandelions and stuff like that. And then we have that area right there that is again moss, right? So every now and then, because we have good goats, it's so cool that our goats, whenever we let them out of the pasture, they don't go anywhere. They just kind of hang out in our yard and, you know, they they like it here. So uh, they know we treat them well, we take good care of them. So they like to stick around, thankfully, right? <laughs> but, um, so we let them out because we know that the grass grows pretty decent over there. I'll let the grass grow up a little bit and let them come out and eat it. But I'm gonna show you over here. So this is on the side of our house. So, we have some grass growing in patches over there. I threw down some seed last year and you can see, like, I don't know if you can see that, but there's some new growth crump coming up in this area here, which I believe, if I remember correctly, this whole area and through here was just moss and the grass is kind of coming in so that's a good sign that 
throwing down seed does help. See, it's so dark over here, but there's a lot of shade. So that's basically one of the major issues on our property is just we have so many trees, which means that we have a ridiculous amount of roots and the roots and the trees soak up all the nutrients in the soil and then it doesn't allow grass to grow and instead we end up with this spongy moss. So all of this in through here is all the spongy moss and we are now in the front of the house which I'll show you. Our house is very unique. Um, this is actually, even though it looks like the front door to our house, this is actually the second floor of our house. And this slanted roof right here brings you down to the first floor, which is actually underground. So considering we live in Alabama, where there are lots of tornadoes and heavy winds, our house is like a bunker. So we don't really need a storm shelter, although it would be kind of cool to have one. Um, our house is pretty much a storm shelter. But back to the grass. So, spongy, spongy. I mean, literally, this moss is everywhere. Even this dark brown patch, it's still the moss. It's just a different, a different kind. Like there's spongier stuff and then there's moss that looks almost more like itty bitty trees, but I mean, I'm not sure what this is. And it's really light. It's not, it has no weight to it whatsoever. Um, but yeah, they're just like, they're just kind of like little trees, but Maybe they are trees. I mean, I I really don't know. But some of the moss is different than, like this moss here is more of like um, a ground covering kind of moss. Where this darker moss over here is more of like those little tree looking things. So I don't really know how to fix that. However, I will tell you that this right here, all of this, it goes down, up, around, right? I don't want to move too fast because I don't want to make you guys sick. But it also was all in through here. Now, if you notice, it was all up here as well, even though it's now bare dirt at this point. It's not soil yet, it's just dirt. Now there's a difference. There's a difference between soil, dirt, and sand, okay? If you're a new gardener, if you're a new gardener, then you're gonna learn that there's different types of soil or dirt or sand. So dirt is stuff that they use for foundations of homes stuff like that. It's sturdy, but there's no nutritional value in it. There's nothing in it that's going to help the foundation or help anything grow that's good. So dirt doesn't really give back to the soil. Sand is very fine, like beach sand. Um, sometimes they use it for filler sand, but it's a very thin material. They use it for like underneath pavers, stuff like that. It's just to fill in gaps, but it's very fine. And then soil is full, rich nutrients, just lots of life in soil, minerals, um, just good supplements, stuff that's gonna grow good food, whether it's food for animals or food for humans. Soil is very, good nutritionally so 
like I was saying, you'll see this big bare spot right here, which also used to be full of this moss, but the cow would come up here, and this is her spot during the spring and summer. She likes to sit up here in the shady spot and just kind of cool off. So there's no more moss that's growing in this area because she's kind of killed it off by laying on it constantly. When you start coming over this way, you'll see that it's getting darker and darker. Now the reason why it's darker over here is because this is where she has pooped a lot. So it's gone from that mossy green color to now it's turning into a rich soil full of nutrients, full of nitrogen. So moss needs nitrogen in order to die back. In order to put nitrogen into your soil, you could use um, you can use store-bought fertilizers like a 131313 or a 101010. That just stands for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in that order. Are the numbers what they represent? So the different store-bought fertilizers put n um, nutrients back into the soil. Once you get nutrients in the soil, then grass and legumes and different forage plants and stuff like that can now start to grow. So the first thing that we need to do with our pasture is to kill back all of this um, moss. So there's a couple ways that we're doing that. One, obviously, we've had the cows up here um, for at least the last year solidly coming in through here whenever they wanted and just pooping all over the place and we left them and that's good because it killed back a lot of that moss so something I did today which is something I never in a million years thought I would do but I we have blocked off the cows from being able to come up in this area so most of the manure that's up here whether it's from the goats or the cows is already dried up obviously goat manure is like little pellets or like little uh, raisinets or milk duds whatever you want to call them um they are not able to be really moved around once they're in the grass they're there but the cow manure they drop in patties so when they start to dry they once they start to dry and they're in a big pile grass will start growing out of them but sometimes if they're too dry, then they just turn into kind of like sponges. So today, as crazy as this is, like I said, I never in a million years thought I would be doing this. But I was out here picking up the dry patties. And not only was I spreading it throughout the grass, but then I also had some seeds. So I put down some radish, beets, and kohlrabi. Not sure how they're going to do, but I want to put some forage type food, something that's going to have um, big leafy structures that the cows and the goats will be able to eat. Another thing that we're going to be doing is we're in the process of making a chicken tractor. If you're not sure what a chicken tractor is, if you're new to farming or new to homesteading, chicken tractors are basically just mobile chicken coops and the way they work is you move them from place to place so you can leave them for like a week um a couple days it just depends on how big your tractor is or how many chickens you have in it or whatever how big your area is just really depends on what your needs are you can really let them scratch it up really good or just a little bit it just depends so we're probably gonna we're gonna test it out first to see how often we do need to move it but we're gonna probably go probably two to three days and then we'll start moving the tractor so um, once we get our chicken tractor built which we are in the process it's I would say a quarter of the way through but once we get that done then we're gonna put the chickens out here and they're gonna start pooping everywhere now they're poop and it's gonna be poop that's gonna be specifically put in small areas so they're gonna come out here and they're gonna scratch up all this grass and all of this moss and stuff like that and then they're gonna start pooping all over the place so once they scratch it up they're now lifting the moss 
putting down the nitrogen because poop is full of nitrogen and that's what this moss needs is nitrogen. It's going to kill all the stuff. Up. Now because there's already some grass that's already rooted in this dirt, no matter what, grass is going to start coming back and because it no longer is being basically strangled by the moss, the grass will be able to spread. Now I don't think there is enough grass up here to where it's just going to come back healthy. So once the chickens come and scratch up their area, I'm going to come through with a forage seed and something that I just recently purchased, which I'm waiting to get, it should be here soon, but I don't have a need for it right this minute anyways because we don't have the chickens out here. It's called um, Free Range Ground Cover. It has alfalfa, clover, and... Um, and rye and I believe there's something else in oh and bluegrass so those are really good natural forages for cows and goats and chickens so even though we're not going to keep the chickens out here they really won't get it that much unless they you know come through the gate when they're free ranging or whatever but I'm really excited to see if that really you know takes care of the problem that we're having with this moss so this is the start of something that I am super, super excited about. And I hope you guys are interested in watching the process of our pasture going from mossy, nasty, I mean, I won't say it's nasty, but it's just, it's mossy um, and unhealthy. You know, like the cows just don't really get enough to eat. I know, you always want to be on camera, don't you? You always want to say hello. Everybody say hi to Sergeant. Hi, Sergi. Say hi. Say hi. I know, he's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. If you guys not have not met Sergeant yet, he is our Rottweiler, obviously, and he is an LGD dog. He is our guardian to our basically everything. He won't hurt a chicken, a cow, a goat, whatever, you name it. He's an all-around amazing dog. The only thing he does not like, to be honest with you, are the male goats. Because he feels like the male goats hurt his girls. Which, when I say his girls, we're talking about his female goats. Those are his girls. Right? Right, Sergeant? Those girls are your girls, aren't they? You're so cute. Oh, you're so cute. Are you a handsome boy? Yes. You're so handsome. You're such a good boy. So, so yeah, so that's our, um, that's, you can see we have some good grass that grows in through here. I'm not petting you right now. There's some decent grass that grows, but like once you get to the hill right here and beyond that way, for some reason, it's all moss. So we're gonna get this under control this year. I feel so good about this. And like I was saying before I got rudely interrupted by this guy here, because we all know, if you guys watch my videos, you know I get sidetracked. And if something happens, sometimes I forget what I'm even talking about. <laughs> but, um, so hopefully you guys are excited with me on this journey. Hopefully you'll see how it works for us. And maybe if you're having the same issues with moss or just something else that's growing in your grass that you can't get rid of, let's see together how well this works. Because if next year when spring gets here, this whole area is just an abundance of green legumes and good forage for my cows, I'm telling you right now that I am going to be jumping for joy and you guys are going to see some massive excitement coming from me. And even if it happens before next year and let's say it's here by summer, oh my gosh, you guys don't even know the excitement that you're going to see because this is something that has been bugging me for the last two years and we're finally starting to do something about it. So it's just super exciting and um, hopefully one day this whole area... I put some seed down here last year and it grew really well in through this area but we get such massive flooding that I think it's just going to take a little bit longer 
um, for it to grow this year. It's starting to grow back a little bit, but with the flooding that comes through here, it pushes a lot of sand and, you know, leaves or whatever that comes from neighbors' houses from who knows how far down. But anyways, everything kind of just piles up from everybody else's yard into our area. And even though there are tons of trees over here and lots of shade, I did put down some seed that's really good for shade. Um, and it did, it did pretty good. Um, obviously the, we didn't do any kind of rotational grazing last year. And if we kept the cows off of this area, it would have grown in really, really well. So maybe something we'll do this year also is once we get our quarter acre up that way, once we get that nice and green and healthy, we can move the hay feeder if we even need the hay feeder and of course a water trough and put the two cows up there and then maybe block off this section for you know like a month or two let it grow in really well and then block off that section over there now if you watched our last video you'll see that we blocked off this area with these T posts, which is more permanent. So something that we're going to try to invest in this year is some netting fence. But you can see that we divided, we divided the right and through here. We added those T posts just to keep the cows and goats off that area up there. So I think we're going to leave this here permanently. And I really don't want gates all over the place in my yard. So we, like I said, we really just need to invest in some um, not so permanent netting and uh, do some more rotational grazing. But that way these two girls over here could be a little bit more happy. I mean, they're happy. Look at that pretty girl. Peachy! Hi! Hey, pretty girl! And then Duchess is hanging out over there. She's smart. She's hanging out on the leftover hay. But as you can see, their hay feeder is empty. And it's almost dinner time. So we put hay out for them in the morning and then at night and they just now finish that hay. They basically sit there almost all day and eat it and then they, you know, of course walk around and pick at whatever's growing. But we're still waiting for spring to get here so it's taking some time for the grass to grow. But it will. And like I said, this year is going to be a good year. So it's exciting. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the little notification bell so you know when we post another video. Go ahead and like and comment on this video. Share it with your friends and family. We would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, you guys be blessed and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.